Yeah, my earliest memory is, I guess the first time I, l I listened to music at our house in Glen Ellen. We used to refer to it as the Gray House. I was diagnosed when I was nine years old. I, I can't remember who it was precisely who diagnosed me, but it was around age nine I started hearing the term Asperger's Syndrome. I don't really think I understood what it was or what it meant. Um, I don't really remember what my reaction to it was. It didn't. It didn't really mean anything to me. It just. It was just sort of like an answer as to why I couldn't communicate with other people that easily. Like I wasn't very interested in socializing with with other people my age or trying to make friends or something. And you know, I mean, rem I remember. I remember very vividly. You know, growing up, my mother. Every time I came home from school, my mother would ask me, did you socialize at all today? Did you talk to anyone today? And most days there would be like a no, and then some days there'd be, yeah, there was someone I sat with, we, we talked a bit. So the number of people didn't really seem to matter as much, just so long as I was actually able to talk to someone. I mean, I could say, I would try to say things, and it would often sort of float over them, like they couldn't really understand what I was saying or what I was talking about. I learned early on that you shouldn't talk about something like Asperger's Syndrome with other children because they weren't going to, going to understand it either and they would make fun of the word. They would make fun of the word Asperger. So I learned quickly that that was not something you talked about. There was definitely noticed that like I had a different way of speaking. I mean children used to make fun of the way that, the way that I spoke and I could never understand why they were laughing at me. And there were times I be, be, just became anxious about everything. If I became terrified of something, I would just like shut down and sit in the corner or something because I didn't want to deal with anything. I mean, the only real thing I was known as in, in school was the kid who could draw. So that, that ultimately, that was one thing that nobody gave me a hard time about was the ability to draw. I mean, there are times that I do, especially recently that I do wish that I could function I, that I could function a little more fluidly like with, with communicating with people I also wish I was better at accepting my own what made me different from other people because there was a period that I started to realize just how different I was having to live in New York having to live on my own having to go off to college away from home it, it's definitely helped me out I think I think gradually I got better I can't, I can't let it stop me in any way. I can't let it stop my life. I mean, there are things that I want to do that will, that if they do come true, they will ultimately cause a bit of discomfort. It's, you know, it's something that I don't think will ever go away. It's, but I think as I become more aware of it, it's something that I just say I'm just going to have to learn to live with it. It's something I think about every day. Hey guys, Lorena Magana here with New Filmmakers Los Angeles. Today, I'm talking to director Jamie Ekins about her new film, A Life with Asperger's. Let's take a look at a clip from the film. You know, I mean, I remember, I remember very vividly, you know, growing up, my mother, every time I came home from school, my mother would ask me, did you socialize at all today? Did you talk to anyone today? Why don't you give our viewers a brief synopsis of your film, A Life with Asperger's? A Life with Asperger's is um, an animated documentary. It is um, about um, a friend of mine who has Asperger's Syndrome, so it chronicles his life, um, what it was like to um, have, the dis have the disability growing up. Uh, when he found out he had it, um, what it's like to live with the disability now as an adult. It's a kind of a coming of age story. How did you come up with the concept behind this film? I was friends with Emmett. Um, we ended up meeting through um, mutual friends of ours um, in New York. And he was going to Pratt Institute at the time for animation, and I was going to SVA. 
um, for virtually the same thing. And um, we ended up crossing paths and we, we share a lot of, a lot of mutual friends. So um, I had wanted to do um, a film for a long time and um, he had been wanting to write something for a long time too. So it ended up working out the collaboration. Why did you choose to animate the film? Well, I had based everything off of an interview that I had done with Emmett. Um, we had recorded an interview, um, so everything was driven by the, the voiceover. And um, I came up with um, the concept of the diving helmet. Um, I was kind of struggling a little bit with how, I was kind of struggling a little bit with how to um, visually represent um, um, somebody with with Asperger's, and so that um, that ended up coming out. But stylistically, I wanted everything to feel sort of like like a sketchbook. Um, so that was how the animation ended up coming in. Did you do most of the animation, or did your subject? Um, I actually ended up hiring out a team of roto artists. Um, the rotoscoping um, was done by a, a group of friends of mine, um, and then the characters that are seen um, in the film, in the third portion of the film, um, walking around with him, those are his characters from his thesis film. How has the film been received? Um, the film has has been fantastic. Um, it's done, um, it's, it's done really well. It's been quite a whirlwind. Um, we ended up wrapping production at um, the end of May, and um, I've been getting tons and tons of of, um, of festivals um, that it's been that it's going to be in that it's been in. So I, I thought I would have to wait months before hearing anything. And well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Aaron Dunbar. I'm the writer, director, animator, and editor of Gone Beyond. Uh, I would like to thank very much the Mission Expo for selecting me. Uh, Gone Beyond was an ambitious work for me. Uh, it took around a year and a half to complete. Not quite nonstop, but pretty close to that. Um, it was kind of an ushering in of a new point in work and filmmaking for me in general in that it kind of has a, it's more in depth with symbolism than my work has been in the past, at least with filmmaking. And uh, that speaks to the idea in general of the film. Uh, where I got my starting point was the idea of this lost character because I was in college feeling pretty lost about everything at the time. And I still do, but uh, less so. Uh, but anyways, that's where um, the concept of having a lost character uh, came from. And everything else kind of branched from there. I get a lot of inspiration from my work in all kinds of random, not necessarily coherent ways. Uh, music is a big inspiration for me. There were a few songs that inspired a lot of the things. Um, I pretty much worked anytime, anywhere that I had the opportunity. Like I said, this was a year and a half long project for me, at least. I'm just, and this is just counting when I was actually animating or editing. I, the way for me that films come along is they usually, I get a really bad idea and then it simmers in my mind for like, I don't know, usually, I think it's usually years before I actually things click and I like know what I want to do with, with an idea, but I get these little seedlings in my mind and they just kind of germinate there until I can explore them further and elaborate on them. Um, but yeah, once I started in the production, I think it was, it would have been in, probably August 2012 or September is when I started actually making it, like producing finished animation. Um, <clears throat> and then I finished it the night of a film festival deadline in December 2013. So it was quite an intensive process. I uh, All the backgrounds were hand-painted oil paints, which... I can guarantee it added immensely to the amount of time I spent in this film. And I really enjoyed the aesthetic of that, uh, but it was a lot of work. Um, the animation was a combination of a lot of software. Uh, there was a little bit of CGI in there, which I've heard mixed reactions from people on that, but I thought it was yeah, okay. Uh, it, I don't... Sometimes my work is... Like, I've had people think my work is flash. It's actually all hand-drawn, but then uh, I hand-draw it, I pencil test it, and then I scan it, then trace it in Illustrator, color it in Photoshop, and then composite in After Effects. Um, and it kind of, I, I think I'm not that good at 2D animation, so I can understand why it looks more like just regular flash. Uh, but I don't like Flash as its own uh, aesthetic as much because it, I don't know, it's always, and this is just personal preference, but it's always kind of looked cheap to me, which it, it is, and I know that's the appeal. But I wanted to make this look at least a little more personal or like a human had ever <laughs> come into contact with uh, the creation. Uh, like I said, that's per personal preference. Uh, how do I feel the film turned out? Uh, well, I, I'm i still, just about any piece of my work I'm very ambivalent about. Like, if I just watch it and I don't think about comparing it to anything else in the world, I think it turned out great. And I've gotten some really nice comments on it uh, that I deeply appreciate. A lot of people have told me that I was a beautiful film. And I don't like to brag about my work, but that, that just makes me feel good. Uh, so I feel like People have enjoyed it, and I've won, won a couple of awards for it. So I'm going to say it turned out fairly closely to how I envisioned it. Um, at the same time, there's always things that like, 
just while I'm trying to think of it, there's a couple of scenes or a couple of shots that I think aren't that uh, well animated. <laughs> uh, but in terms of like visually and the story and everything, I was pretty content with it. It's always animation that I'm the most uh, least satisfied with because I'm I won't deny I'm pretty I have my limitations when it comes to the actual drawing and everything. Uh, so I kind of struggle through that. But um, overall, uh, it was definitely a very rewarding experience and I'm glad people are enjoying the film and I would like to keep promoting it as much as I can until I get more work to promote instead, and then I'll buy it and know what. <laughs> uh, so, I uh, hope you enjoyed the film, and I thank you very much for watching.
Thank you.